Hey, this is Chris with Monster Craft Productions. Today we're going to show you how to make a pneumatic prop. Now, if you've never made one before, then this is pretty much for you. So let me show you what we're making first. Get out of my graveyard! You'll wake the dead! You know, growing up, I always went to the Halloween stores and saw all these cool animatronics around, and I always thought, I WANT THAT! So I decided to do one better. I'm gonna start researching pneumatics. Pneumatics are awesome! And it's basically what this video is gonna do, is teach you how to build a really simple pneumatic setup. But we're gonna go over all the items you'll need, and then get to work. Alright, first you're gonna need some wood just to build the base of him. Uh, chicken wire to kind of fill him out, and nuts and bolts. Wire strippers and electrical wire, it doesn't have to be a real high gauge, because we're only working with 12 volts here, and a terminal block is completely optional. Anytime you're working with pneumatics, you're gonna need an air compressor, and these can be very expensive. I advise to try to find a used one. You'll need an air hose with fittings, and a three-valve solenoid. Air cylinder with a clevis or a mounting base. You'll need tubing, PVC pipe, bar stock, which you can find at any hardware store, and any speaker will do. And last but not least, you'll need your controller. I chose the Pickaboo 104, and LED lights, and a motion sensor. All three of these items you can find at FrightProps.com. I got him lifted up here with a bungee cord so you can see his inner workings. Now the front there is just a board to protect the control panel and all the wires behind him. And at the bottom is just a long piece of plywood so that I have room to anchor him down into the yard. Now he's gonna pop out from behind a gravestone, so I've just got one leading against it. But you've got your two pieces of PVC there, one I'm using for the spine. The two swing arms are just bar stock. You cut that in half with a jigsaw and bolt it all together and there you go. But I found out he was wiggling all over the place. So I actually ended up replacing the first piece of PVC with a regular 2x4 there. And then I zip tied pieces of PVC to the swing arm for the exact same reason. It really helped out a lot. And this is where you're going to be putting your air cylinder because that's what's going to make him lift. Well, what makes the air cylinder go off? Here is where your air solenoid comes into play. An air solenoid is an electrical device that when it receives power, it's going to energize a coil inside, more or less turning into an electromagnet. And this is what's going to lift the plunger. If you've got pressure in that line and the plunger lifts, it'll let air flow through into your cylinder, and that's what's going to push up your piston. If you cut power, the air is now trapped. But if you have a three-valve solenoid, it's got an exhaust port so the air can escape and your piston will go back down with any pressure at all. Now it's time to hook all this together. And it's actually pretty simple. You just get your tubing, you can get it at any hardware store, a plastic push fitting, and it very easily just pushes in there. You cannot pull this apart and it's airtight. Easy way to get this apart, take your fingernail and push that up, pull the tube out. Now on a three-valve solenoid, you're gonna have three ports, P, a and EA. The way I think of it, the easiest way to remember anyway, P is for pressure. So this is what's going to hook to your air compressor. On the end of that tube, make sure to attach a fitting that will hook to an air hose. A is your output. Whatever you're hooking it to, in my case, it's my air cylinder. And EA, or is the way I think of it, is just E, is your exhaust. Here you've got your positive and negative power wires, so as soon as this gets power, your guy's going to go off. When he pops up, I want a light to come on and I want sound. Well, the only way to really make that happen is to use a controller. Our controller is the Pickaboo 104. If you see at the top, it says Relay Outputs, and there's two of them. Let me explain what a relay is. On each relay, you have a set of contacts, normally closed, common or neutral, and normally open. Now, the squiggly line is just your common or your neutral or your ground, whatever you want to call it. Whatever you plug into normally open will not receive power, and whatever you plug into normally closed will. As you can see, the little drawbridge is touching, so whatever's on the other end is going to get power. However, when your relay is triggered, these two switch places. To trigger mine, I can use a switch or a button or a motion sensor, and that's what I'm going to use. There's a connection on the Pickaboo to plug in any trigger you choose. When the sensor is tripped, I want the solenoid and the light to go off at the same time. In that case, I'm going to want to use normally open, because I don't want anything to happen until he's triggered. My LED light out front is hooked into normally open 1, and my solenoid is hooked into normally open 2. This looks like an absolute mess, because it is. I used 16 gauge wire, which really is thicker than we really need it to be. So I need I needed to use the terminal block there, mainly because they just wouldn't fit inside the little ports on the controller. If you use a skinnier wire, you probably won't have this problem. Your Pickaboo has a speaker out port where you can hook up a speaker. This means you need audio. 
Now you can either download something on the internet that you like. I decided to record my own in GarageBand with my own voice so I can kind of make it my own. Now, download your file onto your phone or whatever device you're using, plug it straight into the controller, and upload it. Now as far as programming them, I'm not going to go into all that right now just for the sake of time. But if you click here, it's their instructional video on how to do the programming and it should answer all of your questions. When it comes to the actual guy, you don't really have to worry about too much detail. I mean, he's not real scary, but his scare factor is the fact that he's popping up, not so much what he looks like. His mask, I got at Goodwill. The shirt, I got at Goodwill. This is just a piece of wood that's bolted to the PVC pipe to kind of create his shoulders. You get some chicken wire in there to uh, fill him out. I've got the same chicken wire in his arms. Make sure you cut a section here in the middle because when he comes down, he's going to run into this PVC pipe. As far as putting the head on, all I did is use some spray foam, put it inside the mask, slam it down on the PVC pipe, and let it dry, and there you go. Well, that's pretty much it. I hope you liked the video, and uh, like, comment, and subscribe, or visit our website at monstercraftproductions.com. Until next time, let every day be a happy Halloween. Because you're